Welcome to Stronger. Welcome to our Stronger series. It's been an incredible series so far. I want to encourage you, catch up online. Uh, if you're uh, driving your car, you want to listen to a podcast. If you want to flip back and hear something again because it moves you, do it because all of our preachers are online and they're all available um, for podcast as well. So it's been an amazing series and I have the privilege of knowing a little bit sometimes of the series that God is doing. And so God's been talking to me about Stronger for a long time. Um, but before I start, I just want to ask a question, and online, you can put your hands up too. How many people here have ran some kind of competitive race, like a distance, like a 5K, 10K, a marathon? Good, okay. Anyone here been in some kind of competition where they've got to beat someone? <laughs> yes, the snows are right there. Uh, I often beat my husband at lots of things. <laughs> It's my turn. It's my turn. I love. He tells stories about me, so I figured I might as well, you know, jokes, jokes. Um, something I've done, and I can't believe I've done it, is I've signed up myself and leather, 11 other women in Freedom Hereford to run a 10K race. Now, for some of you, thanks, guys, thanks. We're going to need you on the day if you could just turn up and cheer us on. For some of you, you're like, 10K, yeah, whatever. Um, for some of you, it's like, I will never, ever do that. Ever. Well, we signed up for it, and we signed up for it to raise money for Freedom Heroes, because Freedom Heroes is our project out in Kampala that works with the street boys, giving them food and education and shelter, and reuniting them with their families. And I thought, do you know what? It'll be great fun to do a mud assault course. Always wanted to do one, set myself the challenge, give myself something to go for, and I'll just take 11 gullible people with me. And crazy... They said yes. So we're raising money and we're getting ourselves ready for what's to come. And it's going to be absolutely brilliant. We're going to have a great day. And so at the end of June, and we've already started training. You'll hear about some of it on our social media. And I want to encourage you to sponsor us because it hurts. And it's going to hurt. And training hurts. And the race is going to hurt. It's going to be muddy and it's going to be awesome. But something, as I began to train for this, and for those that are, you know, you compete or you've run a race, you'll know what it's like. You have to get yourself ready and you have to get yourself stronger. And so as I began to train and began to exercise, I was like, God, I'm going to use this time to grow my spirit. And so for my first ever day of training, I said, God, what does stronger mean? What does it mean to be stronger? And he began to show me that it's this process of now and the future. So it's the process of we've all got our now, we've got where we are right now, and we've got our future. So mild example, the 10K race. I've got my now, and I tell you right now, I'm not ready for the 10K race. <laughs> and it's only about four weeks away. But we all have it, don't we? We've got our right now, and we've got our future, and you're going to have your right now, and you're going to have your future. Now, okay, a race is a, it's, it's a mild example. It's, it's a bit of a lame example, really, because once it's done, it's over, and it's great, and, but it's in season, and it'll be finished. But I want you to take a moment to think about what your now is and what your future is. Because I believe for some people in this room, your now looks like a marriage that's really hard. Or your now looks like not being able to have kids. Or your now looks like a dream about a business, but you're nowhere near it. And your future, you've got a future in front of you. And your future might be, I want a healthy, strong unified marriage. Your future might be having children. Your future could be an epic business. But I know for every single person watching, listening in this room, you've got a future. And you can think about it right now. You could probably name it. Because you've all got something. We all have something that we're called to. And we've all got something that we want to do, that God's told us we're going to do. George, for example, he's going to be a our Kigali campus pastor. He's got a future that's coming. But right now, there's some training to do. There's some stronger to do. And very, very clearly, God said to me, the gap between now and your future is your training ground for strength. Because the future you all have before you, the thing that went in your head when I said, what's your future? You've now got a training ground. Because it might happen tomorrow, but I bet for some of us, the future we've got planned is going to happen in maybe a year, maybe it's the end of a degree, or it's something you're pursuing. But it's, it's, there's a training ground. 
There's this bit in between the two of them. And you can't presume that you've got the strength right now. I don't have the strength to run my race right now. I might have the audacity, but I don't know if I'll survive. <laughs> um, but I know that there's this training ground. There's this gap in between. And God told me so clearly, strong means daily devotion. Now, a race, that's, yeah, that's a devotion to training. That's a devotion to fitness. But it's not about that, is it? This, this Stronger series isn't about just a race. It's about us pursuing a life of daily strength with Jesus. And you might think this is basic, but God has had to drill this into me year after year after year because I'm naturally lazy. I naturally get busy with loads of other things, but God is desperate to grow me in my bit between now and my future. He's desperate to grow me in being in daily devotion to him. And that looks like reading my Bible. That looks like praying. That looks like doing my prayer first lot. That looks like spending time listening. That looks like worship every day. And we all know that we've got to have that. And I can tell you confidently that the leaders of our church, the reason they're strong enough to continue to pursue the future of what this church looks like is because they're in daily relationship with Jesus. I know that when I spend time and I go and see H at her house, do you know what? I see her Bible open on her table. I know that this woman, and I know that the leaders in our movement, spend time in daily relationship with Jesus, because that's the only way we're going to get to our future, right? We're not strong, right? We are strong right now, but we're not strong enough. The stuff that we are called to, the stuff that you are called to, is way bigger than you can ask or imagine, and you need to train and prepare yourself. You have to, but it costs you. I've got friends who are bodybuilders, and it costs them the food they want to eat, the time that they have, the, the training, the money to invest in what God's called them to, the example that they are. But it costs. Daily devotion is hard. But it gets you stronger. It gets you part of the way towards what God's calling you to. And as I went through this, and as I talked to God about, yeah, I'm going to be strong, and yeah, I'm going to daily devote myself... I began to realize that there was this mindset that started to establish in me. And I think we can all do this. I don't think this is a me thing. I started to realize, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, yeah, I can. I've, I've been reading my Bible, so I know a lot. So I can, I can do this leadership thing. Yeah, I, uh, I listen to God and I hear his voice. So yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. God, I'm fine. I've got this. I began to realize that I'd set up in myself this sense of I can do this. And that's good. God wants us to be confident. He wants us to be strong. But something changed in me when I began to think that I could do this without him. And there's a stronger that we have, and it's called confidence. There's another stronger that we can have, and it's called arrogance, where we get to the point where we start to think, I can do this on my own because I did this, 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 and this. I can do my dream or vision because I've got this much money and this qualification and look at my certificate and I'm so great and I've just, I spend an hour with the Lord every day. I don't. But we, we start to put our confidence in what we can do. And over the couple of months as I um, sort of spent more time with God and I spent time with him daily and he really pushed into me, Saz, you need to be daily. Your devotion needs to be daily. I started to hang out with some of my friends and, and I started to realize that for me and for my friends, do you know, we had the daily devotion and we had the commitment to church and the being with other people and the speaking life. But we also had the moments where life was still too hard because even though we had all the strength in the world or all the strength we could get, life gets too much and things get too hard and things turn up on your plate and you think, I am never going to be strong enough to get through this. And we have that moment where we think we can do it and we can't. Because we've built daily devotion, which is good, right? But we've built it so much. It's a daily devotion to us and a daily devotion to our own strength. And, and God taught me this. He said that living in my strength alone either fails me because I met people where their own strength was failing them or glorifies me. We get to that point where we become the subject of our strength and we think we're good enough and we think we have to do it on our own and we think when we train enough, we're going to be enough. But life isn't like that. Because I hit a point where I was like, God, it's not just about this daily, is it? 
It's not just about being a good Christian every single day. It's not just about reading those Instagram quotes that make you feel like you can do it and go girl and all that thing. Because that stuff, that stuff runs out when you get the phone call from the doctor. That stuff runs out when you've done the 15th pregnancy test. That stuff runs out when you get a call that your business is going under. That stuff runs out when you're exhausted and you just don't feel like you can do it anymore. Because self-help and daily devotion and that kind of, I can do this, it only takes you so far. And then trouble hits. But I know that for lots of us, you'd kind of think that it's really good to daily devote, but there's something else that God gives us. There's something that he kicks in. So I want to introduce you to a a story in the Bible of a woman called Deborah. And she's pretty epic. And if you have heard Josh's preach, um, it's basically the story right after that one. So Ehud has just gone and stabbed someone. Read the story. It's gory and brilliant. And Josh's preach is excellent. But there's this, the next story following on from that is a woman called Deborah. And the Israelites, who are God's people, they've not bothered with God again. They've given up on him. And they live in a land ruled by a man named Jabin. And Jabin basically is a really tough king. He's really horrible. He doesn't like them. He makes life really hard. He doesn't honor God. And the people, the Israelites, begin 20 years later. They've kind of realized, oh, yeah, there's this Lord that we can call on. So they start calling out to the Lord. And God speaks to Deborah. And I believe that Deborah was a woman of daily devotion, I believe that she was a woman that daily was strengthening. I don't think she just all of a sudden heard from the God. I think that she had a relationship where she was listening to God regularly. And God says to her, he says this, and it's really brilliant. He says, go, take with you 10,000 men and lead the way to Mount Tabor. I will lure Sisera, who's the commander of Jabin's army, and his troops to a river, and I will give them into your hands. So God basically speaks to Deborah and says, go get Barak, Go build an army. Do you know what he does? He tells her how to get stronger. God gives her some daily devotion. He says, go and build an army. Go and get stronger. Here's your now. This is where you are right now. Your people are under threat. The king's a tough ruler. I promise you that you're going to go to battle. There's your future. That's what you're going to do. And in the meantime, in this training ground between now and the future, build an army of 10,000 men. So God gives Deborah and Barak, he gives them an answer. He gives them, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to get stronger. Go, get stronger. Go, devote yourself. Go, build your muscle. Go, be with people. Go, build God's people and make them stronger. So he says so clearly, God is calling us to go and get stronger. He's calling us to build ourselves because he's calling us to take on battles and to take on our future But imagine this, Deborah and Barak, they go and they have 10,000 men, it's quite a lot of men, and they walk them up the mountain and they look at the mountain overlooking a river where God, Sisera, who's the leader of Jabin's army, they've got 900 ironclad chariots and men on top of that. Rumor has got it that God's people have gone to the mountain and Sisera brings his army below the mountain in the ravine down by the river. Imagine this, Deborah and Barak take their men and they go to the top of the mountain and they look over what God has said is their future. And they look over thousands of men. They look over chariots. They look over the leader of Jabin's army and they look over a valley where I think they would have started to think, God, this is what you've pulled me to? God, you've you've pulled me to this. This looks like the end of my life. You've not only pulled me, but you've pulled 10,000 men. And before us is our future. What, God, what are you doing? What are you, this future is too big. This future is too deadly. This future isn't going to work. And you've told us we have to come and fight this. And I think that we all have that moment where we hear the real vision of what our future is. Because I bet back at home, when Deborah was sat under her palm tree and Barack was at home with all his men and 10,000 men were like, Ray, that's my, it's a terrible, terrible impression of men. Um, I believe that when they were back at home in the safety of the crowd and the God's going to give us the army and God's going to call me to my future and I've got a vision and God's going to do this and look at what I've got in my future. I believe that's a real safe place. The cave, when you say I'm never going back, that's a real safe place. And then you start climbing the mountain and then you start building the business 
And then you start getting, getting, then you get married. Then you start trying for kids and you start to look over the valley where your future really lies. And we can get scared because our daily strength has got us this far. Our daily strength gets us up the mountain. Our daily strength gets us the voice of God to see our future. But all of a sudden we look at something that's huge and we start to freak out. And I believe that Barak and Deborah would have gone through this. They would have felt the pangs of affliction and it pulled them to their Bible and to their knees. And we have that, don't we? When we see our future and something goes wrong or the dream is massive and you just think, God, I need you. This is mental. What we're doing is mental. And God, you are going to have to step in. You're going to have to be a part of it. We've had the privilege of walking incredible journeys, planting church, having kids. And there have been moments where I've got on my knees and I've said, God, this is too big for me. I'm not strong enough for this. I, I train, but God, this is too much. Lord, what's down there? What's to come? God, I can't see how it would work. I am at the end of myself. And we have that moment. We have that moment where we feel like this is just too much. And I can tell you, that's how most, of pe- most people live who maybe don't know Jesus. They have that moment where things go wrong and they don't have something outside of themselves. Maybe for you here or listening, you feel that pang of, I have to be strong enough for my whole life. I have to be strong enough maybe for your children or for your family, and you just feel like once you've given everything, you look at the valley of your future, and you just don't know what's going to happen next. But the best bit about the story of Deborah isn't just this daily strength, and it actually isn't that she wins the battle. They do, but it's not because of their daily strength. It's because of something different and something that we have that's so powerful. We have divine power. And God began to reveal to me as I was thinking about this daily strength and I was meeting with my friends, I began to see people at the end. And I was like, God, all I've got is to pray for this person. He was like, off you go. And you began to see, I began to see God's divine power hit earth. And there's this bit in, with Deborah and Barak, there's this bit where divine power hits. And do you know what? The battle is too big, but God's called them to it. Your vision is too big, but God's called you to it. What you're going through does feel big, but God's called you to it. And there's this bit where divine power begins to hit earth. And it's something that you won't know. And it's something that you won't see. And it's something you can't control or manufacture or make. It doesn't matter how good you are, how much you read your Bible, how strong you feel, how many races you've run, there is this moment where God comes and he brings something divine. He brings something powerful and magical and supernatural that's beyond us and it hits earth. And I tell you, God's divine power will hit your earth like a force. Because Deborah and Barak, they were stood in the battle and they were stood over the valley. And do you know what? That they did not have to do a thing. They just had to chase God. And this is what Deborah says. She says, arise, this is the day the Lord has gone before you. And I want to speak over your circumstances. Whatever future you saw in your head, whatever it was that you thought, God, that's what you're calling to me, good or bad. I want to say this right now. Arise. Today's the day. The Lord has gone before you. He's gone before you in your story. He's gone before George to Kigali. He's gone before the campus pastors of Scotland. He's gone before you in what you think is infertility. He's gone before you in your business. He's gone before you in the community centre that you dream about. He's gone before us, church. Because we do not, God does not leave us to our own strength. And he does not leave us just to be disciplined and be good people and do it all on our own. He collides divine power with earth. Because it's not just about daily devotion. It's about something God is going to do. And so um, Barak and Deborah, they're right in the battle. And they basically watch from the mountain. They watch God send a flood now, you try riding a chariot through a flood, and it says that the, the, there was mud, and it got cloggy, and the chariots got stuck, and the army was thrown into confusion, and, and God came, and every single person, bar Sisera, was killed that day. It says that from the heavens, the stars fought, and Deborah shouted, march on, my soul be strong. 
There's this bit when we hit our future and God goes before us. And I tell you, you are going to say, I believe you are going to say, march on my soul, be strong. You're going to walk into your circumstances and there's going to be something as you watch God move on your behalf. Something's going to rise in you and you're going to say, march on my soul, be strong. And Sisera fled and the army, it says that Deborah and Barak and the 10,000 men came in and finished everything off and it was completely done. Now that's a story from the Bible that includes muscle and men and chariots and all of that. But we have it, don't we? You have your future. You will watch your future and you will watch God move on your behalf because he's desperate. He's absolutely desperate to do it. And whatever feels too much for you, God's just, he's going to come. Now, the thing with the heavens and the stars, stars in Old Testament times were representations of angels. Because God doesn't leave us on earth to make things happen. He sends heavenly hosts to come and help us. He sends supernatural things. I believe some of you are going to be in boardrooms and people are going to give you money because do you know what? A heavenly host made it happen. I believe for some of you, you're going to sit in a room where you're having an ultrasound and they're going to say there's a baby in there because do you know what? The heavenly hosts have moved for you. We're going to, we're going to be in Scotland and there's going to be places for children in schools and do you know what? The heavenly hosts are going to move for you and you've got to start to expect. And I even believe you've got to start to ask God specifics for where you're at. I don't know what your specific is, but I know that you can ask God to send his angels, to send something supernatural to move on your behalf. And I want to say, church, don't just stand in how strong you are. Stand in the fact that God will go before you. And I want to say, I think you should write down something specific you're asking God for. Because we've done it. We've had moments in our life where we've asked God for crazy things, crazy things. And God, he not only does sometimes what I ask, not only does he answer my prayers, but God has gone over and above in what, when people say that's impossible, people have stood before me and said, that is impossible. This will never happen. We will not let this happen. That is not going to happen. That's not, they've just, they've said that is law. People have put law in front of my face and said, this is the law. This will not happen to you. God's above all that. He sends his angels. He sends his angels and they change things on earth because stronger isn't what I do. It's what he does with me. And it's this divine power. And I've been able to say, march on my soul and be strong. I know that when we live, when we live in this place that it's just about us and it's about our daily devotion, we either fail or we think we can do it. But there's something about when we live with God Because living with God's divine strength ensures success and it gratifies him and it glorifies him. When you live in this place, like Deborah and Barak, you live in the place that's divine. You live in the place where God moves on your behalf. You start to say, it was only God that got me here. We can speak out over the things that we've faced, the valleys, the battles, those things that God has called us to that we never planned do you know what I can say? It was God. I can say to those that don't know Jesus, yeah, my story is incredible. It was God. It's for his glory. It's because he did it. The success that we've had, the blessings, they're from God. But not every story is golden, is it? God sometimes doesn't come through. But in those moments, he, he does what he does best. And that is, he knows exactly what we need, good and bad. And he strengthens us in the hard times and the good times. Maybe in the wait. Maybe the bit between now and the future where it takes longer than you think or or it doesn't come through straight away. That's the bit where God forms us and strengthens us and does something powerful. If you're new to our church or if you're just settling into Freedom Church or if you're online, I want to say that talk to some of the stories around you. Talk to the people sat next to you. Talk to people in cafe or when you chat online or um, when we meet as groups or Wednesday night vision night. Whatever you can and however you spend time with people in our church, talk to people. Because this story of daily devotion meeting divine power, that's, this is not a Bible thing. It's a today thing. Because I stand in a room and I look out over this room and I have seen marriages restored from unfaithfulness. 
And it's taken daily devotion, daily devotion to each other, daily devotion to forgiveness, to grace, to good communication. But it's also taken divine power. I sit in a room where people were told they could never have children. They have IVF and have one child. But do you know what? Two years later, they miraculously conceive. And it's taken daily devotion. But it's taken divine power because God steps in and the dreams and the visions, they come to pass. And there is story upon story upon story in this room. In this room, you're sat next to people who daily devote themselves and have seen the divine power of God. They're right there. They're right with you and they're right around you. And sometimes we need to see it and sometimes we need to experience it. So there's this thing that happens when daily devotion meets and blends with divine power. And it's so powerful. But how do we work this? How do we work this out, right? I mean, I know a couple of Deborah-like characters who can prophesy into my future. But actually, God's going to begin by giving you a future. So point one is, how are you going to make this happen? One, you're going to have a dream for your future. And for some of you, it's a dream. And for some of you, it's something to survive, something hard. For some of you, it might be your marriage or your health or a 10K run. Please have bigger things than that. It's great, but please have bigger things than that. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to have a dream. We've got to have, if we want to see this happen, we've got to have a dream that we're called to. And if you don't feel called to something and you feel like you're at the end of yourself, ask God. It's all Deborah did. Deborah prayed. It said that she called out for her people. She called out for the Israelites. And God said, okay, take a rack, go take an army, off you go. You'll beat Sisera. She called out. So if you don't think you've got a vision, I think you should spend some time asking God what your vision is. Spend some time asking God what your vision is. If you've got something that's going wrong, spend some time with God and ask him, what is the future of my marriage? What is the future of my business? What is the future after my degree? The next thing you've got to do is you have to have a plan and daily devote yourself. You've got to constantly put yourself in a position where you're pursuing that. You can't just become a teacher in the UK. You've got to train. You've got to do a degree and get yourself ready for it. But it's the same for all our things. We have to daily devote ourselves. And it's really, we've got it. It's our DNA consistent growth. (laughs) It's right there in the heart of who we are, Freedom Church, that you would get yourself there. The final thing we've got to do is we've got to have the amazing faith that God's going to turn up with his divine power. And that's why I said I think you should have specific things you're praying for. Because I believe, church, that God's divine power is going to turn up in your circumstance. I believe it. I believe it. And, I, and I ha- we have people come to us in desperate situations. And sometimes all I have to say is, I believe. I believe for that. And God's going to do it. What if we don't? What if you don't? What if you don't daily devote yourself? What if you don't pursue a future? Well, there's this bit in the story of Deborah and Barak, and it's, it fascinates me, and it only caught me at the end, really. So if you jump back into the story, and you jump back into the bit where Deborah had to say to Barak, get an army of 10,000 men. God's giving the land over to you. Barak had to then go and collect 10,000 men. He didn't just have them. He went to the Israelites and all the different tribes and all the different families and said, hey, I need 10,000 men. Who's coming with me? Who's coming to fight for the Lord and fight for our freedom? And men would have nominated, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. So you might be someone who says today, God, I'll go. Whatever my future is, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with some daily devotion. I'm going to go knowing you're going to move. But you might not. Because there are three groups of people, and it's in Judges five and I've shortened it but this is basically what it says it says that Gilead stayed Dan lingered and Asher remained they did not come to help the Lord in the battle against the mighty for some of us God's given you a future and God's called you out and God's saying come with me come with me to the battle come with me to the future come with me to the victory I'm going to fight with you come with me to it And do you know what? There are moments when we choose to linger, we choose to stay, and we choose to remain. We choose to linger on really believing our marriage could be full. We choose to remain in, I know I can't run that business. No, I'm not good enough for that. I've got it wrong before. I'll get it wrong again. We choose to stick around when God said, move, go on an adventure, go live in that other city, that other nation. We linger. 
and you run the risk. You can hear a great preach. You can go to the cave. You can say, I'm never going back. You can say, I want to move. You can say, God, I'm all in. Deborah and Barak said that. But some people, Israelites, God's people, lingered, stayed, and remained. And you run the risk of not being at the front line. The thing is, is they, did, they won the war. They didn't, no one got killed. And maybe what God's calling to you, you think, it's sure death, Lord. It's sure death. It's too much. No, no, no. God promised, I will deliver that into your hands. But still, our fear, our laziness, it stays. It stays and we don't bother and we don't do anything. If I'd have taken the approach of, I'll linger, stay and remain, but I'll run a 10K race, I would be screwed. But whose fault is it? Mine. Because I had the chance and I didn't do it. For some of you, you look at leaders and you think they're the strong ones. They're the ones in victory. They're the ones going to the battle. They're the ones taking on some kind of epic future. No, I promise you, if you are at home serving your family, if you are committed to Hereford and you're staying here, if you're committed to your Cardiff location or your Worcester location, wherever you are serving in your home, God will give you the victory. Because he doesn't just do victory on the battlefield, in the church plant, in the big. God does victory in our every day and in the visions we have for every day. God uses everyday people for their visions and for the fullness and the freedom of what he's got. And you can be those people. And so if, if you're serving at home in a business, in a local business, you're keyed in and committed to your city. and You're not going anywhere. God's going to use you. God's going to use you for the victory and the freedom of his people in whatever situation you're in. So let's close this out. I believe that ultimate strength is both daily devotion and divine power. It's not just daily devotion. It's not just on you to be big enough for this. It's not just on you to get through this. It's not just on you to hold your family together or to survive. It's not on you to save this nation because it's mixed with divine power. It's mixed with when God comes in and he moves. And this is how the whole story of Deborah ends. And this is one I want to speak out of you as we finish right now, because this is the end. This is what Deborah sings. Chapter four, Judges four is the story. Judges five is a song. I'm not going to sing to you. It's my husband's job. It's not my gift. Amen. Um, But Deborah says this. This is her last line to us she says that those who love the Lord will be like the sun when it rises in strength and so I want to say to you wherever you are in Deborah's story whether you are beginning you've got a vision but you haven't even started you've got a future and you're at now and you're nowhere near that or whether you have tried and tried and you're disciplined and you've worked hard and you've got stronger and you spend time in God and you're at the pits and there's no, and you just you're looking over the battle and you think God what's going to happen there's my future what's going to happen or if you're in the throes of running to war be strong oh my soul I don't know where you're at in that but let me tell you this if you love God you will, you will be as strong as the sun. He will raise you in mighty strength. We do not have to do this on our own church. Stronger is not what we can do. It's what we do and he joins us. When we join him and he moves. So I'm going to pass over to all our location leaders, wherever you are, and they're going to pray with you to finish what God said today.